Okay guys, you've done really good so far. You've been bearing down and really making sure you're focused on this. Um, we have probably a couple more we want to go through. I'll try to split this sums and roots of polynomials uh, into two videos. The first where we derive where these are coming for, and then the second we're going to look at a couple examples of where we might use that or where ID might be testing us on something like this. So it's very similar to what we just did in quadratics where we had a function and then the first thing we did was we divided out that A. So let me grab my colors so that they match what I had done here originally. So I have this term here in red and this term here in blue and then this term here in D. And I think it's pretty clear to see that this last term is going to be our uh, our product of our roots. We've looked at it in all instances. When I multiply a bunch of polynomials together, I end up with the last numbers always multiplying together. They don't have an x on them, and they're our constant term. So this is called our constant. And it is indeed the product. And we'll use down here. We're going to look at that. So again, we can write any polynomial as a product of its roots. And that's going to be x minus alpha, x minus beta, and then lambda. We haven't really looked at lambdas before. It's a different term. It's just another Greek letter. I don't know. It kind of looks like a walking man to me. He's like maybe Charlie Brown bent over kicking a stick or something because he's upset. So that's what lambda looks like. And then we have alpha, beta, and lambda are the zeros of our product. So here we go. Let me give you a second. We're going to multiply that bad boy out. Let's make sure we can find all of the pieces of this. Well, okay. So, whoops x, x, and x, and then we have these two, these two, these two, and if you want to go ahead and write these out in, maybe you multiply these two together and you get x squared minus this term and that term. Plus alpha beta. And then you can multiply it this way by x minus lambda. So once you multiply that out, if you want to longhand, you can do it that way. You can see your x cubed, your um, alpha x squared, your beta x squared, and then you'll have your lambda x squared right here. And then you'll have your alpha beta x right here. And then you'll have your beta lambda x and then you'll have your alpha and your lambda x right here because it's minus minus giving us a plus and then we have alpha beta lambda and here we're having a negative the opposite of so in this problem what we can do is then we can look at these terms right here all give us the coefficient or they're all they would be combined to give us our x squared, and then we have these guys right here all combined to give us our linear term, and I don't have an orange anymore, so we'll just say, and then these guys right here combined. There's no combination there because there's only one constant term. So that means that I can then factor out that negative there, and then factor out the x squared, and so I have x squared times the quantity alpha plus beta plus lambda. If you're confused on where the minus went, 
it's right there. We pulled that negative out. Did the same thing here. There's our coefficient, and then again, this guy's just real simple. Boom, three multiplied together. So in this case right here, my sum, you can see, is alpha, beta, lambda, and there's our product. So those are the two things we were looking for, which were the sum and the product of the roots. So here, this b over a, and this right here, b over a, are our sums. Okay. Again, opposite. So that means that if this number right here were 5, for instance, then the sum would be negative 5, so watch out for that. And then the product right here, goes here, here it's also a minus, so this right here is going to be also the opposite of the product of our roots. Now remember when we did quadratics, this was the actual product. Um, I think the reason that we're getting opposite here is because I had three terms. If it had been four roots, you would have had negative, negative, making positive here, and then negative, negative, making positive here, and then when you multiplied those product of the two roots here and the product of the two roots here, we would have got a positive product. So watch out for that. Okay. So we're going to generalize this out. I've got some polynomial where I have a sub n. This is the coefficient of the largest degree term. Here's the second term, ellipses, I labeled them for you, dot, 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 meaning I'm going from here all the way up to almost the very last term. This is the next to last term and the last term, a sub zero. And x to the zero would just be one, so that's why we don't write x to the zero. Well, what happens if we divide out a over n? Then I'm left, just like we did up here, remember, divided out the a over n. We're left with a sub n minus 1 over a sub n, and we would do that all the way down until we had divided out every term, that coefficient, on the linear, I'm not the linear, on the first term here. So this term right here is going to be our uh, sum, and this one right here is our product, and again these are both opposite of, okay? Right here. So it's opposite on odd power. And I guess we just write that as not opposite on even power. We're going to take a second, and then we're going to go over an example of what this looks like. 